Hey, welcome to my video on house loads. I've gotten quite a few questions on house loads, so I decided to go ahead and make a video just on those. Now, this is primarily dealing with multifamily, which also includes like apartments, hotels, uh, townhomes, condos, things like that, where there are multiple units per building. This will be based on the 2023 NEC, Article 220. And this is my crash course series again, so it'll be fairly quickly gone through. There's not a lot of detail to do with house loads, so it won't take much time. Okay, so first we're gonna talk about what house loads are, and then we're gonna to go to the code to see where they're used and how we put them into our calculations. Now, the only place in the NEC that even mentions house loads is 220.84 under multifamily dwelling, because that is mainly where you're gonna see these. And because of that, we're gonna to go to 220.84b. It says, house loads shall be calculated in accordance with part three of this article, and shall be in addition to the dwelling unit loads calculated in accordance with table 220.84b. Okay, so here we're under 220.84, which is the optional method in article 220, but it's referring us back to part three, which is the standard method for our calculation when we add these house loads. So just as a little bit of a recap on how the code book is laid out, you have part three, which is for standard feeder and service load calculations. And that is found in 220.40 through 220.70. And then you have part four, which is the optional feeder and service load calculations. And that's found between 220.80 and 220.88. So you can see that 220.84 puts a smack dab in the middle of part four. And so since we're in part four, we'd be using the optional method. However, it's telling us again that we have to go back to part three for the house loads specifically. So we gotta go back to this section for house loads even though our main calculation will be under the optional. Before we get into our example and work through it, let's just go over real quickly about what some typical house loads are, just so you kind of get an idea of what's included in the term house loads. It's basically any common areas that are used by multiple tenants in a place where we have multiple unit occupancies. So that can include lighting, power, HVAC, or any other kind of uh, power requirements. This can include premises wiring, like parking lot, security, maybe walkway lighting, stuff like that. Uh, any shared use facilities, uh, pool equipment, laundry facility, conference room, dining room. You know, sometimes like in a hotel, the fancier hotels, you'll have a, a dining area, dining room. That would be a house load. Kitchen, uh, lobby areas, elevator and equipment, corridor and egress lighting, fountain pumps and lights, you got signage outside fire alarm security systems, vending machines, a workout room maybe, spa, sauna, and any common bathrooms. Now these are just a few of them. There can be many other loads that are house loads that are part of common areas. Now in general, we're gonna treat these like commercial loads. So we just treat it like a commercial calculation and we use part three, the standard method, to calculate these loads up. So as you'll see, we'll be breaking this down into two sections. You'll have your section for your your actual dwelling units. So like in a multifamily, each unit has its calculation and you have demand factors that can apply to that via the optional method, part four. But then you have these house loads that will be calculated under part three, the standard method, and then be added to those. So that'll be your second section. It'll become clear as we work through our example. Okay, and here is our example. We have an eight unit condominium and we do have a common area with some house loads here that are listed out. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with a standard method first. I'm gonna show you how it works with a standard method, which is really straightforward. And then we're gonna to go to the optional method and show you the difference between the two methods and how house loads are added. It's pretty much the same thing, but it looks a little different because they are different tables. All right, so here's a multifamily standard method table. And I'm not gonna go through this in detail, but you can see we have each column, we get our totals. And I do have another video that goes in great detail how to go through this table. And I'll have that link at the end of the video and in the description below, so please check that out. So we get our column totals here down at the bottom. And then in this last column, we have a section called house loads. And this is where we would put our total for our house loads. And then we would add it into our calculation and get our total for our building service. You can see we have our house loads listed down here. We have a pool pump, filtration system, pool area lights, and some vending machines. Now we don't have very much space here, so what I would do is just go on like a separate piece of paper and just add them all up like this. You got your pool pump, two horse, 230 volt, 
Uh, we go to table 430.248 to find out what our FLC is, and we can get our wattage from there. So we got 2760. We've got our filtration system, pool area lights, vending machines. We just total them all up, and we get 5635. Now remember, pool area lights, that is going to be a continuous load, so we need to add an extra 25% to that. And then once we get our total, 5635, we'll just plug it in right here. So here's what that looks like. We get 5635. Remember, that's from our totals here. And also now we can get our largest motor of the building because in this case, our largest motor happens to be the pool pump at 2760. Now our other motors we know are like our two window AC units. They're only 1200 watts a piece, so they're smaller. So in this case, the pool pump is the largest motor. So we want to take an extra 25% of the pool pump and put it here. And we're going to add that to our calculation. So going back to this column, we have our heat and AC tallied up here, 52,000. We're going to add our house loads. Then we add the extra 25% for the largest motor from our pool pump. And that's going to give us 58,325. Then we can add the four column totals together and we get 166,421 VA. Divide by our voltage, which is 240 single phase, and we get 693 amps. And that's our building service. And again, that is for the standard method calculation. Okay, now let's try the optional method. Pretty much the same thing. We've got our left column here tallied up with our loads. Optional method, 31,975. We bring it up here, multiply by our number of units. We get 255,800. Put our demand factor in from table 220.84B, 43%. And that gives us a total demand load of 109,994. Now we've got to add our house loads. So if we remember, here's our house loads. Nothing changes here. 5635 is our total. And so we're going to plug that in here. So let's see what that's going to look like. And there it is. I just plugged them in here. I did have room here to put them. So I just went in and put them in. Got the pool pump, filtration, pool lighting, vending machines. 5635 is our total. So we just add that to 109,994. We get 115,629 VA. Divided by 240 volt, single phase, we get 482 amps for our service total. And it's really as simple as that. Adding house loads is not difficult. The only problem is the code book is not real clear about it. It doesn't spend, well, it only spends one sentence devoted to house loads. And so it does confuse a lot of people because it's not very clear, you know, when to use them and, and when not to use them and how to apply them to your calculation. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. If you have any more questions on house loads or anything else, please drop me a comment and let me know. Please check out my channel for other videos. I have a whole bunch of load calc videos out there, uh, multifamily, residential, commercial, uh, you name it. I have pretty much a load calc for every situation um, with the exception of a few, which I'm still working on some of them. But if you like what you see, please punch the like button and also subscribe. That helps me out a lot. I appreciate it. All right, I will see you next time.